see if we are up. I think we are up in three places. We got Facebook. Live on Facebook slash work on your game. Live on Instagram at Dre Baldwin. Live on TikTok. My TikTok name is Work on Your Game. Hope everybody's having a great afternoon. Is it afternoon? Yeah, it's officially 12.04 p.m. when I'm recording this. Hope everybody's having a great afternoon, great day, great start to your great start to your what? What do we call this? I guess we'll call it your Wednesday. Great start to your Wednesday. Shout yourselves out. Tell me your name and locations. Y'all come in. We're getting started in 30 seconds. The topic here today is what is your IQ? Your IQ. When I say your IQ, I'm not asking about how smart you are if you ever took the test. I'm asking about what is your I quit? What is your I quit? That's the topic here today. We're going to get into this and we're going to cover this in about 15 minutes. I'm pretty efficient at what I do. As you are coming in, shout yourselves out in the comment section. Tell me your name and location as you are coming in and I'll shout a couple of you out and then we're going to get into this. And I'm talking on all platforms, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram as well. Angie, what's going on? Good to see you. Hope you are having a great day. You're in the Midwest. Shout out to the Midwest. Shout out to the Midwest. I, I know a lot of people in the Midwest. Shout out to Ohio. Shout out to Illinois. Shout out to Indiana. Shout out to Kansas. Shout out to Oklahoma. Where else I know people at? I know people everywhere. Uh, shout out to everybody in the Midwest. Everybody not on the, not in the coastal, coastal part of the United States. Shout out to y'all. Anyway, for those who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. I'm a former nine-year pro athlete, author of 35 books, and I'm four TEDx Talks, create this whole brand called Work On Your Game. What we do here is we take the tools to help athletes get to the top 1% of the sports world, and we translate those tools over to the business world to help professionals perform at their highest level, do so consistently, and make more money in your business. Today, we're going to talk about the mindset aspect of what we do, because our game, what we help people do here is perform at your highest level, do so consistently, and make more money. So that performance piece Mindset is the foundation of it. That is the foundation of what we do here at Work On Your Game. Even if you come into our program because you want to make more money, we will help you make more money. But understand that we need to change the way you think so we can change what you do, which will change how you uh, produce your outcomes, change the outcomes that you produce. So we're going to talk about here today, what is your I quit? Because uh, one of the key attributes that any successful person will need in life, whether you are already successful or you're on your way to being successful is resilience. Resilience, the ability to continue moving forward in the face of adversity, in the face of challenge, in the face of setbacks, in the face of other people, well-meaning people, telling you you should probably give it up because it's not working, or negative-meaning people telling you you should give it up because it's not working, or just the situation itself telling you give it up because it's not working. Do you have the resilience to keep going and what is your IQ means, what needs to happen to you in your life and in your situation for you to give up and quit? How much can you keep going before you quit, before you stop trying? And everyone has different levels of IQ, just like with intelligence, everyone has a different level of it and it can go up or down depending on what you're doing to and with yourself. For example, today I just got finished reading this book on objections, uh, selling objections. And the more that I read about that, the better I get at sales. So I'm probably going to be better at dealing with selling objections tomorrow than I was yesterday because I just got some new information. It's the same thing when it comes to your IQ. Things that you are doing that can help build your resistance, resilience rather, or help lower your resilience, which means your IQ will go up or down given what is happening in front of you. So you can do things to adjust your IQ. That's the point. It's not like this is an, an immutable characteristic you're born with and you can't change it. You can change your IQ depending on the things that you do. So let's get into it. I just told you the first point. Point number one is resilience. Number one thing you need in order to raise your IQ is you need a high level of resilience. How much can you endure before you give up? Now, this is an open-ended question that I'm asking to you. And here's the thing. You don't need to answer to me this question, but you must answer to yourself. How much can you endure before you quit? This is the key of resilience. And I want you to understand that no matter how successful someone looks from the outside looking in, and every person you know, you're looking at them from the outside. Even if you feel like you know them really well, you know them like the back of your hand, you've been business partners with them, you're married to them, they're your best friend, you are looking from the outside looking in. There are challenges that other people have that you don't know about. The only challenges you know about with other people are the ones they want you to know about. Other people have challenges that you don't know, that you don't see, that they don't talk about, and you'll never know about, they don't want you to know about them. Everyone deals with challenges. I don't care how successful they are, how much money they have, how many followers they got on Instagram, how happy they always appear to be. Everyone deals with challenges. And I talk about this in, I talk about this in one of the episodes of my masterclass, my, my podcast that comes out every day. I call it a masterclass. It is called Work On Your Game. And I have an episode, I believe it's 1663. The title is 
what is your favorite flavor of shit sandwich? And I came up with that title. I heard somebody else use the, the phrase shit sandwich and I, I borrowed it and made my own concept out of it. The whole thing is everyone in life has to go through some shit. All right, whatever that is for you, you might be going through something right now. You might have just finished going through some or you're on your way to going through some. Actually, it's probably a combination of all three. Every successful person has to go through some shit. Every unsuccessful person has to go through some shit. And every mediocre person who's somewhere in the middle, they have to go through some shit. The only difference between the successful and the unsuccessful and the mediocre is how long are they willing to endure going through the shit before they quit. The unsuccessful person only goes through a little bit of it and they quit. The mediocre person goes through a, a, a mediocre amount, an average amount, and then they quit. And the successful person goes through all of it and they don't quit. That's the only difference between the three. Now, the shit is different for each person, but everybody has to go through it. There is no human on this planet you can name who is successful. However you define the word success, you come up with your definition of success. Anyone you know who fits that description, every single one of them had to go through some shit in order to get there. And as a matter of fact, the more successful you become, the more shit you have to deal with. It doesn't stop when you become successful, just in case any of you was wondering. Dr. Jamie Lacey, good afternoon. Good to see you. I appreciate it. The more successful you become, the more shit you will have to deal with. It doesn't go away because you are, quote unquote, successful. As a matter of fact, you get more of it. Those of you who are old enough, you remember a song by Notorious B.I.G. It was called Mo Money, Mo Problems. All right, he wasn't joking. All right, the more successful you get, whether money is part of your success, fame is part of your success, uh, just achievements, accomplishments, whatever it is that you label as success, the more of it you get, the more shit you will have to go through. It does not go away. It actually increases. And a lot of people think, well, if I get all this, you know, people say, if I get more money, that'll solve all my problems. Well, it'll solve some of your money problems, but it'll create a whole new set of problems that you don't even know about until you get to the other side of the mountain. So the point being, the resilience uh, requirement does not go away when you become successful. As you continue to win, the resilience requirement actually goes up because now, again, you just have to deal with different things. Not that you don't have to deal with anything else anymore. Now, it may solve some of your problems, it's not gonna solve all of them. Again, you can solve your money problems on making money, but there are other problems. How many people listening to this right now have some problems in your life that don't have anything to do with money? You can't buy your way out of them. Okay, exactly, so everybody. So there are always problems that you have that are not just related to things you can go accomplish in your office or in the gym or on uh, social media. You got to deal with them. They're just problems because uh, people have problems. People are imperfect and you got to deal with other people whose their goals conflict with your goals are going to be challenges, problems, conflict, et cetera. All of this happens in life. You must be resilient to deal with this because it never ends. So in case any of you was wondering, when does it end me having to deal with problems and challenges and other people's needs and stuff popping up and me having to eat the shit sandwich? Any of you is wondering, when does that end? Here's the answer. It ends when you die or maybe when you retire. Uh, we can say when you retire, you decide to retire out of what you do and you are no longer going after success. and You're no longer trying to accomplish or achieve anything at that point. Then you can pretty much give up on you don't have to worry about being resilient because you don't have anything to deal with. You pretty much are just taking up space and taking up oxygen and pretty soon. Your higher being, whatever you call that, God or whatever, they'll, they'll take care of you. They'll take you away because you're in a way. But as long as you're trying to achieve success, there will be something you got to deal with. Everybody got it? Good. Point number two. We're talking here today about what is your IQ? What, do you, what are you willing to deal with before you quit? Number two, the skill achievement gap. Now, if you have, I've dealt with a lot of people in my life. I've known a lot of different people, whether my background in the sports world where everyone's trying to ascend and we got scoreboards. So it's very clear who's winning, who's losing in the sports world. In the business world, where it's less clear who's winning and losing, but everybody still in the same way is trying to achieve something. There are many skilled people out there. And some of you can think about any one you know who fits this description. There are many skilled people out there who accomplish a lot less than they could, given their ability. They accomplish less than their ability suggest they could. Why? Because they quit. Because they didn't have the resilience to keep trying. I can tell you so many people I dealt with as an athlete, because as an athlete, you know, the biggest thing is, I mean, athlete, the sports world is a genetics competition. I mean, it's about who has the best genetics. You're playing a sport like basketball. It's about who has the, the length and the fast twitch muscles and who's tall and who can run and jump. That's pretty much what basketball is. And I knew people who had more genetic tools than I had, but they did not go as far as I did as an athlete because it is not because I outworked them. Yes, I, did, I worked hard. I mean, my whole thing is called work on your game. So never, never. Never take anything that I'm saying as me discounting the value of hard work. However, that the main thing that allowed me to keep going when they didn't keep going is I had more resilience than they had. 
I was willing to keep going when they didn't want to keep going. It's not that they didn't have the tools. They could have. If they had my resilience, they probably would have went further than I did because they have more tools than I had. You get what I'm saying? What's going on, Prince Dre? Good to see you here. So many people have tools that don't get used simply because they don't have the resilience to keep trying when things are not working. Do you have the mental toughness? Do you have the resistance? Do you have the persistence to keep trying when things aren't working? There are many skilled people who have taken their skills with them to the graveyard simply because they didn't have the resilience to keep going when things got tough. Do you have it? That's a question that only you can answer. And you need to answer it through your actions, not through your words. So whenever I pose these questions, you can answer it to yourself, but you really need to answer it with what you do. Don't answer with what you say, because as we all know, talk is cheap and people say things all the time. But then they don't do them. And I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure many of you have plenty of examples of seeing that. Moving on to point number three. We are talking here today about what is your I quit? What is your IQ in life? That stands for I quit. What do you have to endure before you quit, give up and stop trying? Number three, how willing are you to fight back when things are not working? How willing are you to fight back when things are not working? And when I say fight back, I don't mean fight against another person. I mean fighting back against the situation. When a situation is simply not working the way that you want it to work, are you willing to fight back? Are you willing to push back against that situation and say, this circumstance is not going to defeat me. I'm going to defeat it. When you're in the gym working out, any of you who go to the gym, you know there's a period sometimes during your workout, depending on what kind of workouts you do, Maybe if you take a class or you have a trainer or something like that, when you can't just voluntarily sit down when you feel like it, that sometime during that workout, you don't really feel like doing another one. You don't feel like doing another repetition. You don't want to do another push up. You don't want to run another half a mile. You don't want to do any more burpees. You don't want to do another set. But the trainer's telling you to do another set. Are you going to let the workout defeat you or are you going to defeat the workout? And you can swap out workout and sub in whatever you're dealing with right now in life. So there's someone listening to this right now who's dealing with something who needs to hear this. How willing are you to fight back when things are not going the way that you want them to go? Because your willingness to fight back will lead to your ability to fight back. And then your ability to fight back will lead to you actually fighting back and actually fighting back will lead to you having more resilience and getting through the, the shit that you had to deal with and then getting to the outcome that you want. But you got to be willing to fight back. And a lot of people in life, here's just the truth. A lot of people are not willing to fight back. A lot of people are only willing to do something as long as it's convenient and easy and the road is pretty clear and smooth. And as soon as it's not convenient and easy and smooth anymore, they quit. They give up. I just told you this. I dealt with a lot of athletes who had, again, just as much if not more raw ability that I had. But I went further than a whole bunch of them simply because I was more willing to fight back when things weren't working. What about you? It's, forget about basketball. Let's talk about business. Those of you who are trying to build a business right now, you got things is are things, some things not working for you right now. Are you willing to keep going? Are you willing to keep trying? Are you willing to keep fighting even though it's not working? And here's the key point that I want you all to get. When you're willing to go through the, the challenging stuff, shit, you get to the other side and you succeed. Then you can tell your story to the rest of the world. You see, as, as an author, as a professional speaker, someone who's done four TEDx talks and I have a brand and I put a lot of my you know, story and uh, experiences out there and I get to tell that stuff. I talk to a lot of people who want to tell their story. Every human on the planet has a story and everybody wants to tell their story. Here's the thing. Not everybody gets to tell their story because not everybody wants to be. Not everyone has an audience of people who want to hear your story. And the only reason that people want to hear anyone's story is because you've created some level of success. Once you've created success and you're noted for your success, then people want to hear your story. But if you don't go create the success, then nobody wants to hear your story. It doesn't mean you don't have a story. They just don't want to hear it. The reason people don't want to hear it is because you didn't go through enough of the shit with enough resilience to achieve the outcome that would get people's attention. See, the success gets their attention. The story is what they relate to. But until you get the success, they don't care about the story. So there's an order of operations here that you got to go through. So with that said, let me recap these points. Anybody got a question or comment, put it in the comment section. I'll take them and then we'll wrap up. Topic here today is what is your IQ? It stands for I quit. Number one point is resilience. You must have a high level of resilience. That is your willingness and ability to continue and to persist despite setbacks, challenges, and uh, let's even call them failures. Things just not working. Are you willing to persist through that? That is called resilience. Number two, the skill achievement gap. There are a lot of people with a high level of skill, but a low level of achievement simply because they don't have the resilience to keep trying when things are not working. Do not let your talent go to waste because of a lack of mental toughness. And number three, the willingness. How willing are you to fight back when things are not working? Again, not fighting back against other humans, but fighting back against the circumstance themselves itself. 
when things is, are not working, are you willing to fight back? If you are, you have that high level of resilience, then you will start to see your outcomes start to match your potential. And I think everybody wants to do that. And challenges, many, many people don't because they don't have the mental toughness, they don't have the resilience. But now that I told you this, at least you can take the first step towards it. So we have a program in our uh, university called Work called Bulletproof Mindset, Bulletproof Mindset 2.0. That's our flagship program. You can get it by going to workonyourgameuniversity.com slash BPM, that stands for Bulletproof Mindset. That's workonyourgameuniversity.com slash BPM, that stands for Bulletproof Mindset. Bulletproof is one word, but that's how we did it. Bulletproof Mindset. You can get that. Again, work on your game university. Bulletproof Mindset. You can send me a DM if you don't have that link. I'll send you the link. That's for Bulletproof Mindset, our program. And work on your game university. That's our full program. If you want to have me as your direct coach, we focus on mindset, strategy, systems, and accountability. Just send me a DM with the word game, G-A-M-E. We'll take it from there. Question from Angie says, book recommendations from team boys to grow mentally to build resilience and confidence. It's an excellent question. I would start with this book right here. Uh, Angie, that's this book right here called The Third Day, The Decision That Separates the Pros from the Amateurs. So just uh, send me a DM with the number three. Send a DM with the number three, just the number three, and we will send you a link to get a copy of this book. The book's free. All you do is cover the shipping. And again, that's at thirddaybook.com. If you go straight to the website, Third Day, that's what this book is all about. Showing up and giving your best effort when you least feel like it sounds like what you're asking about. And we have... I've written 35 books. So when you get into that book funnel, Angie, we're going we're gonna to sell you a bunch of other books at the same time. You can get one book, but you can get, we can probably sell you 15 in the funnel. Your choice, but just send me a DM with the number three and we will send you a link to get this book the third day. The decision that separates the pros from the amateurs. All right, so with all that said, Angie, hopefully that answers your question. Send me a DM if I can help you with anything else. Everybody else, good. All right, y'all have a great day. All right, y'all know where to find me everywhere. <laughs> Work on your game. We are out of here.